Um, good evening, everyone. Um, there are still a few people arriving, and that's fine. You guys just kind of fill in from the back. Um, but we'll, we'll make a start on tonight's event. Um, my name's Melanie Kidd. I'm the Director of Programmes here. Um, I've been working very closely with MATAB on the development of the um, project. Um, I'd like to introduce the panel. Um, Matab Hussein on the end here. So Matab is the artist uh, that's been commissioned to produce the exhibition downstairs. And we're joined by Sue Stewart. Um, Sue is a, a national um, arts writer, curator and broadcaster, uh, writing for various um, arts and photography publications and working with media and radio. Um, Sue's actually um, been commissioned by New Art Exchange to write an essay in response to Matab's work which is going to be featured in his catalogue, which is going to be printed in the next couple of weeks. Um, so we're really interested to bring um, Sue's um, kind of national view on photography into this, into this project as well. Um, I'll just say a few words to introduce the project, and then we'll move into the conversation, which will be predominantly between um, Matab and Sue. Um, it started about 18 months ago, um, oh, longer than that. Um, we met Matab through a project we did called Culture Cloud in 2012. Culture Cloud was an open exhibition which allowed artists from all over the country to submit work and curators and, and public audiences voted. Um, Matab was actually the winner of the competition and, and part of that prize was um, a commission with New Art Exchange. Um, so over that, in, since then we've been getting to know his practice and um, we were really aware that Matab had this social commentary element to his work and he was very interested in the subject of multicultural societies. And with New Art Exchange's remit around um, stimulating new perspectives on the value of diversity, cultural diversity, um, on art and society, it was a, a very interesting marry between um, his um, interests and, and our ethos as an organisation. Um, so we didn't give Matab a particularly big brief. Um, we said we wanted him to come and join us here in Nottingham in Heisen Green and just to start to explore, start to test the temperature of this area and to, to, to see essentially what came back from that on a, on a socio-political level. Um, the local area is so important to New Art Exchange. Um, whilst we think of ourselves as a national, international art space, it's more important for us, or, or you know, it's, it's difficult to kind of to, to, to weigh these things up. But it's incredibly important to be relevant to the local communities that surround us. We're um, a contemporary art space, but we're not in the cosmopolitan heart of a city. We're slightly outside of that. We're in a neighbourhood and. Uh, we give ourselves um, this, this um, objective to make sure that our exhibitions have a relevance to all of the communities around us, not just those that might be interested in, in art for, for art's sake. Um, so we were really, really excited to see uh, what Matab would come back with and how he could bring uh, the context of this locality into our gallery space and, and also to bring those individuals into the space as well. So that's very much where the project started um, and might have embarked on a five-month residency. But I'll maybe stop there and pass over to Matab and Sue who will you know, talk about the project in more depth. But thank you both very much for joining us and of course a huge thanks to Matab for producing the work and putting on such a, a brilliant work uh, show downstairs. And, Sue, yeah, yeah, I'll hand over to I, you. I was overwhelmed by seeing this. I'd only seen things on the screen at home, and seeing the exhibition was is actually stunning. I think some of the work he's done, and the way he's photographed these, the portraits basically, and photo photography portraits have many different ways. But this is a very original way of presenting these people. And also the other aspect of it, which I think is equally important, is the text. Because I was walking around and reading the text and I thought that was really stunning. So I'd like to start this conversation really with asking you about your own family background and how you fitted in and also what you remember about the life and the changes in your family. Okay, um, firstly thank you so much for everyone turning up. Um, yeah, so I guess it's about being really honest. Um, uh, my parents um, originally from Pakistan. My mum always says that she's from Karachi and my dad came from Gujarat in Pakistan and they, um, they got married and moved to Scotland. And my mum actually in Pakistan had a very beautiful life. She lived in a village. Um, I would say it's kind of almost like a, an ideal life that a lot of people want in this country. And owned a farm with 
lots of animals and and um, she was plucked up and dropped in in the middle of Scott Glasgow in the 70s so I think it was quite a big culture shock uh, for my mom and uh, we were there for about five years and doing very well my we had we had business we we owned two properties um, and um, sadly um, it all started crumbling and it fell apart and my parents decided to move to Birmingham which is where my grandfather uh, lived and he came here in the, in the 1950s and um, so they built their started to build their lives again and um, um, the, my parents ended up, ended up getting divorced uh, two years later so our, what, what we didn't know at the time was that we were essentially um, kicked out of the community out of the, out of the British out of the Muslim community and um, um, a few years later I ended up living in uh, one of the deepest darkest places in Birmingham um, which is called Drew Teeth and we were the only Asian family living there so I grew up incredibly British um, with very kind of British uh, ideals and um, really lost my my um, my culture as such and um, it was it was about uh, 10 years later that I finally moved back with my with my mom and she just she told me that you know you need to go and find yourself and find your culture so I ended up going to a college where it was predominantly Pakistani and um, had an incredible um, experience there, and I thought I was going through an identity crisis. But actually, these 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 young guys were also going through this identity crisis, and so I started to make work around um, identity and heritage and displacement. And this is kind of how we've got to this stage, really. Um, and you know, we've gone through quite a lot. My, um, you know, we've we've had, we've been support through the through the trauma. We've been supportive, you know by the government and and um, it was just, I think when I started to walk around this space, I really felt like I was, um, I was reconnecting to, to those paths really. I felt I had to make the story about the migrants. So did, did you find that it was a sort of trigger, it, it was almost like echoing what you'd gone through when you kind of, when you went to create this project? Yeah, definitely. I, I almost felt like I was reliving those, those moments, um, especially with the Roma community that has just moved in and, and this, they, they have this, um, great sense of faith that uh, that the UK is going to be able to provide them with this amazing opportunity and with my You Get Me series it really talks about the, the, the older generation the, the third, fourth, fifth generation and how that starts to kind of erode itself so it, re it really did make me think about well what was what was what were my parents you know thinking of when they came over and um, did they really think that we would become as British as, as we as we have done really so can you just tell us how you, how you started this up? Because um, in order to talk to a lot of the people in this exhibition, I would imagine there's quite a lot of privacy and shyness or not a reluctance to do it. But how did you do that? Because you seem to have a very intimate approach to the people. When you look at them, they're not sort of showy off and being brash. They're being actually very honest, it seemed to me. Yeah, um, I think that's just something I've managed to learn and pick up as I've gone through making work. Um, it's, um, I guess I, the way I work is I just literally walk the streets and I literally walk the streets for five months at New York Exchange and, and then there's got to be this kind of level of attraction with people when I'm, when I'm wandering and I literally just stop people and mm -hmm. tell them I'm an artist and this is the work I'm making and if they would be interested and um, you know what was great about Heist and Green was that I, they, were, they, were, they were incredibly receptive and sometimes people don't want to have their portraits taken initially, so I'll, I'll go in with an interview, and I think once people start to understand the, the, the type of questioning and what I'm trying to get out, the, the portrait seems to come, and the way, you know, portraiture is quite a complex subject matter. There's, you know, there's a three-way triangle, essentially. There's the, the artist, the sitter, and then the, the spectator. And um, I wanted to try and really empower the sitter when I when I make my work, so um, I used to like, most of the time I'd say to them that your portrait is going to be seen in a gallery, it's going to be seen in a magazine. How do you want to be represented? And and I think that really helps break down 
that barrier and 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 you know we'll go through a few other techniques really and did, did you do a lot of photographs of each of them i mean did you spend a long time presumably you did um sometimes um yeah. so for example there's an image downstairs oh, Yeah, so with, I guess we can talk about Monica first. Um, I literally took two shots of Monica, um, and it, it, in, a, in a commission, it's very rare that uh, these moments happen. Actually, um, I remember uh, meeting her, and um, she she walked into this shop with her son and was asking about um, the fabrics, and I just thought, God, I've really got to take a portrait of you, and managed to. Com Chased her down the road essentially, and <laughs> and managed to stop her and convince her to to uh, to be photographed. But it was only because her sister said no. I think you should do it. So I met her up the next day, went to her, her home and interviewed her first. And we walked out her outside her house. And as soon as I put my camera to my to my eye, I just saw the image was just there, and I didn't need to do much to it. And took two shots, and it was done. And it was an an amazing moment. Um, whereas another time, there's one particular chap downstairs who's, uh, which is, the image isn't here sadly, but who um, is leaning over some tires. His name's mm. Kalo. I think I shot him about five times, and it just wasn't right. And I kept coming back and saying, actually, it's just not, it's just not right for me. Can we try it again? And and the fifth time, it just, it was it Because was he was leaning on the tires. Wasn't yeah, he was. He was. And, and yeah. if you saw the other portraits of him, they were all very, very different. And um, it's just, yeah, it's just about me being incredibly particular about. Don't want to sound too technical, but what kind of camera is it? Is it a plate camera, like a camera on a tripod? No, I just use... just a snap? Yeah, I mean, not a yeah snap, well, I, I <laughs> use a 5D Mark II. Um, it's a digital camera. Mm. Um, I started off using film many years ago, but um, it, was, it was interesting that as soon as I, was, I took photographs, people would say, well, what does it look like? And, and, and I would say, well, this is a film camera, and... and and it made me realise that actually I need to be able to show the image instantly. Yeah, well, that's so, the advantage of digital cameras, isn't it, when you're trying to do it with somebody who might be a bit shy. Or exactly, and, yeah. and, and I think that's really helped my practice because they're able to see the image and, in a sense, take ownership. And we, the, sometimes we'll, we'll, work, we'll work together to make sure the image is right. And for me, it's, it's, it's all about integrity. You know, they... I'm, I'm making work about people. I don't want to exploit that. I, I, and you know, the text that downstairs is incredibly honest, and mm. and um, it's it's about being open about the whole process and, and what where it could lead to. Basically, the text is quite extraordinary because they're being very honest, but also incredibly bright about what they were talking about. I mean, almost poetic in some cases. I mean, did you have a very long span of, of conversation and then you edited it? Because it's it's quite unusual to read that. Yeah, um, it just, I guess, again, it depends on the sitter. Some, some will talk less than others. Um, but the processes, I obviously we just record them and get them transcribed, and then we, we go through and find the key, key paragraphs. And, mm. um, but not change it too much, just make sure that their voice is still, still in there. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about the, there's a kind of spectrum of, of age here and generations and single people talking about their lives. So can you just go through that kind of spectrum and give us a, a picture of that? Yeah, um, <clears throat> so in the, in the, as you walk in, you've, you've, you've got Ali, and, um, and I guess we can talk a little bit, a little bit about how the project formed itself. Um, mm. I, um, I, the way I tend to work is just I map the field. So the first month I was literally just walking, taking photographs of the shops and just kind of getting, getting to know the energy of, of Heist and Green. And, and when I do take on commissions, I really like, like them to be quite open because it's very much led, led by the individual. And um, I met Ali um, in, an, in an alleyway um, off, off Radford Road. And, um, and uh, it was a really hot summer day and he was leaning against his car, pretty much wearing what he's wearing now. And I went up to him and I said, um, I'd really like to tell your story. Would you be interested? And, and Ali's, if you've met him, is quite a calming character and just looked at me and said, do you really want my story? And I said, yeah, I really do. And he said, well, what can you do with it? And I kind of explained I could probably put it in the show. And, and um, we met up the next day and his interview just blew me away. Um, and he talked about the horrific violence that's happening in Sudan, how his people for eight years now have been living on campsites. Um, how they're being looked after by international organisations like Save the Children and Oxfam, and and 
I, I've always heard that, that word, asylum seeker, and never really quite understood what that really meant. And it was the first time that someone really told me. And, um, and I just, I walked away from that interview really, really taken, taken aback and, 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 and found that this was the direction that I wanted to make, make mm. my work. And I guess so the central wall really looks at why, why certain communities have come over here. Um, there's a space, there's a grouping downstairs which, which has the, I, again, it was a, a bit of a comical thing that I would say, I'd, I'd call them the, the rare species, which was the English people that lived around in the area. And we would have a, we would have a moment and we would definitely have a, have a giggle about it. And it was, I really wanted to, to know from them what, how they felt about migration and what was happening in Heights and Green. And very different to what you know, we're told in the media, like from Nigel Farage, you know, they've said how actually it's really benefited the area and how in the 80s all the shops were closed and it wasn't a very good, good place to be. And then you've got, then you've got another grouping where the, 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 the older generation talk about how there's no sense of community and how that's lost here and how it, they had it back home. And, and then the young generation, they, they kind of counter that argument and they say, well, actually, no, we, 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 do, we do mix. We, we mix at school, we mix in youth, youth centres, and, and we will change that narrative. So, so within, the, within the space, you have those interesting conversations, which you know, talks about it in, an, in a very open way, I think. Do you, do you come out of any of those situations where you feel very emotional? Because what you were describing with Ali was an extraordinary story. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah well, my, my sister, she's a psychologist, and I often say to her that I feel like I've got her job a little bit. Um, <laughs> because you end up um, really taking on that energy from, from mm. people, and sometimes you need a break from it, but other times you, you, this, that's the driving force. And I feel really privileged, to be honest with you, um, to be able to stop people and, and for them to really trust me and, and, and let me tell their story. I mean, that's an incredible position to be in. And, mm. and um, I'm, I'm incredibly nosy as well, so it's a, it's a, good, it's a good thing. That's a photographer. Yeah, a photographer, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about you as the photographer now, the other side, well, that side of things. Sure. And just the way that you have worked on this and the, the compositioning and the actual practical side of it and the way that you've done it and also the colours in this in these photographs, it's mm -hmm. really beautiful. You've Thank got a very good sense of colour. Thank you. Um, but this is a great thing. I mean, oh, we've got it. We haven't got it now. But Ali's with that little tiny <coughs> bit of yellow on it, uh, below his T-shirt. Yeah. Just absolutely makes that, doesn't it? It does. He knows because he's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yes, talk about you. Yeah. So I'm. Um, I shoot really rigidly, um, and um, I. I um, and it's it's the way I really like to shoot. So. And in terms of the colours that I like to use, it's, I like to use a really low colour palette, so as, as, as low colour as possible, so only a few. And um, in terms of... And I think that's what really makes an image quite powerful. Um, and I don't see it as street photography, I, I, I really see it as portraiture. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, Does anybody say it's street photography? Some, it never I, occurs to me. Really. No, I, well, sometimes you, you have... You know, I don't think people quite... Well, certain people don't quite understand where, mm. where it fits in. I think it's quite a difficult medium to, to place sometimes. But um, like, like I've, I've said before, you know, I, I, I try and go through the similar workings of the National Portrait Gallery. I, I, I worked there for three years. And when you read their captions, they, the sitter comes first, always before the artist. And it was something that I wanted to take with me in my practice. So that's why they're so centralised and, and poised. And mm. artistically, I don't want to put too much of my 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 positioning in there, but but, but it does come out as well. That does come out as a kind. There's a sort of political side to this as well, isn't there? I mean, you're you're dealing with something which is which is that these people are dealing with the politics of their lifestyle and their lives. Yeah. Which um, adds to it. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm I guess I'm a very political artist. You know, it's it's the kind of work that I make, uh, um, and. Um, I think when I was when I was working on this when I was working on this project, you know, at the time in the summer, the media was just going crazy with, with migration and and UKIP had so much airtime and I was walking around and people were telling me, have you seen this program on Channel Five? And I'd go back and I'd watch this awful program which talked about immigration and really was incredibly damaging and scaremongering actually, and and I felt that actually. You know, this is not the right narrative. This is not what my experience has been all my life, and mm. and actually, we need to be able to empower the 
the migrants' voice, and, um, and that's that's why I've tried to do. Do you plan do. to take this somewhere else? I mean, this really is an exhibition that should be moving around the country. Yeah, is so that one of your plans? part of the commission, yeah. uh, it was under the strategic touring, so we will be sending it to two other venues in the UK. Um, yeah. They haven't been confirmed yet, but no. we're, we're hoping that will be take place in the next mm. couple, within the next two years. And mm. I think the kind of beauty of this project as well is, although it's um, it's emerged totally from a small radius outside of New Art Exchange, what it talks about, the context that it gives to the migrant community and that experience and that kind of wider understanding of why people are here and what they've come, where they've come from and the experiences that they've had, I think it's a very important that 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 conversation happens nationally and in, in mm. other cities. I mean, I think, for example, um, I went down to the Folkestone Triennale um, over the summer periods, and Folkestone has experienced a lot of migration from mm. Europe, and I think this exhibition would work beautifully there and just bring different kind of voices to the fore and different kind of perspectives. So, yeah, so mm. ideally it will go to a couple more spaces after it's been Yes, it definitely should, at least a couple more. Yeah. And also, it's a sort of, it's a sort of thing that you could actually continue and expand because there's so many ideas. well this is it yeah. and um actually one stage in, in the project i did say to mel i think i might just focus on the roma community because they're an amazing amazing community here there's over two thousand people that live in in nottingham and in in terms of the, the the community that was most welcoming was the roma they were so open i had amazing access into their families lives and and um they really they were, they're fascinating and obviously tonight we had Dennis playing and um, yeah so there, there is there is a, always a continuation and I guess this is my practice really it's it's, it's never ending it's it's looking at multiculturalism and, and it's it, that's always changing such such as the the idea of identity it's always changing it's also interesting now to do something you're focusing on one particular aspect mm. of it, one particular grouping of people because mm -hmm. there is that there is a photograph of the of the entire family, which is very moving mm. and very different. Mm. Well, yes. um, I was just thinking about how you'd feel if you were the subject in this exhibition. And what would you do? How would you present yourself? Well, like every photographer, they hate being over the other side, really. Mm. Um, but um, I'm really happy to tell my story, you know, what my parents went through and what we went through as, as children. And, and um, I think if I was stopped, I would... I would, I would participate, I guess, and, and um, are, you, are you saying that, what story would I tell? Or? Yes, what story would you tell, but also how would, how would you present yourself um, in a way that would do... <laughs> exactly, you see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. B because I was going to ask difficult. really, how do they pose themselves? Because they're, you know, did they take a lot of posing or did you have to have a lot of control over it? Um... Because they look, some of them look like kind of very good models. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they do. And, 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 and I... I I guess that's just the the the, in, the interaction that I have with the sitter, yeah. and and I really try to make them relax. And and um, I guess one of the things I always say is look through the lens, but don't look at the lens. Look right through it. Like try and get into my eye. And I think that's what that's how you get the, that powerful gaze, really. Mm. Um, I don't think you can overlook that side of being a photographer. It, 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 taking the photograph is one element of it, but to make somebody feel relaxed enough and empowered enough to allow their picture to be taken, I, I, I think about me trying to take my partner's photograph. He hates it. You know, I can't get him to do it, and that's me trying to do it for him. And that's really blown me away with this project. Actually, within a couple of weeks, um, Matab came back in to see me, and he had a huge amount of photographs already. And that he'd been able to connect with that many people and that they'd feel about relaxed enough mm. to kind of sit and have their image taken. Um, it's, it's a huge part of the process of the work. Mm. And then there's the actual taking of the photograph. Mm. Yeah. Yes, I think that was, I think this is the real quality that you've got because you know, some of those people are clearly quite shy, mm. but it doesn't come through. It's, no. it's absolutely astonishing. I think I've just been really, um, well, it's my old, my old life. Your you know. Charm. I worked I worked in bars. I've worked in crazy luxury men's clothing shops. So we've got this kind of pitch about me, I think. But I'm just a really. I think I went through a real identity crisis, you know, and that's why I did the You Get Me series to really find myself. And and I think I came out of that. And actually, my mum actually said some things. I think that made us closer because you know, when we used to, she used to talk about. When she used to ask me if I was British and I'd say I was, it used to really upset her. And um, but making that work and my mum realising actually I'm both British and Pakistani and coming to terms with it myself as well 
it's made me an incredibly relaxed person and mm. very sure of myself. And I think from that, I'm able to make this kind of work because I think if I wasn't so comfortable with who I am, yes. I wouldn't be able to do that really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I think that's yeah. true. Yeah. There's one thing I was going to ask you. What do you think about smartphones? Because a lot of the people that you will have photographed will be taking smart, but they'll be taking photographs of themselves and their friends. Mm. So how do you think that's... I mean, in the future, would you ever think of doing an exhibition of their uh, photographs of themselves and their friends? Um, I think there's, I think smartphones has definitely helped in terms of posing. Uh, people are very much more aware of, mm. of their image, and it was a comment somebody once made to me about that, and the, 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 how, how confident these sitters, mm. sitters really are. Um, in terms of me making a body of work with smartphones, um, funny enough, people always try and give me their their, their favourite portrait when I you know once, but I'm it's, I don't think it's something that I would quite like to. Kind oh, of no, I didn't mean see. you to do an exhibition, oh, right. but to, for them to do an exhibition, you yeah, to I'd see how they did it with a smartphone. Yes. Yeah, I think so. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just wonder whether it would be quite nice just to finish on that subject of multicultural societies, and it's the kind of opening sentence in our exhibition blurb is that your practice as a whole, this exhibition, previous collections like this, are exploring what is a multicultural society, do multicultural societies work? It's a really difficult question. Mm. And Matab was on uh, BBC Radio this week, and the, the DJ there really focused on that as a subject matter. And we talked about it again since, but I don't know whether you wanted to reflect on that. What have you learned about a multicultural society from the study here in Nottingham, maybe the study in Birmingham as well, but... Mm. How has how has this project kind of furthered that kind of questioning for you? Um, well, I think Heisen Green is quite a unique space, really. It's um, so, you know I've been photographing in Birmingham for about six six seven years now, and and the communities there tend to live in their own pockets, whereas in Heisen Green it's all in one space, and um, yeah, it has a real London feel. So I think multiculturalism seems works much better uh, as a as a as a theme in in, in in Heist and Green because people have to live with each other. But I think that I think that word is a bit charged anyway, really. Um, and you know, the government always talks about this idea of integrating. And I don't I think that's the wrong word. Um, I think it's about assimilation. It's about each community learning to take something from the other community yeah. and, 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 and bettering their own lives and you know their their own culture. Um, and that's already happening. With shops and food and clothing, I mean, yeah, com- clothes are changing, completely and fixing, moving around between the different cultures. But I think it's 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 um, it's a difficult thing, isn't it? You know, we we're so tribal in our own in our own spaces, and it's quite hard to sometimes, you know, give up your cultural past and and move forward. Um, but I think that's clearly happened to me, um, and it's clearly happened to my siblings and. I think that's just naturally going to... But also that generation, the sort of young generation of teenagers, they've met girls and other friends at school, and you do see it, I mean, when I'm in London, I just see loads of, of kids, girls, they're all mingled up with different communities, and it just seems to be the natural thing. Whether or not it carries on when they get older mm. is another question, but it is really happening very rapidly, isn't it, yeah, compared it to the parents? Yes, completely. And that's a very interesting aspect of it. Just, just on that point, I think one of the beautiful things within the exhibition is, is again, the narrative from the Roma community. Mm. And on this subject of kind of multicultural um, society, they um, talk about having um, heritage, which is Indian originally, and um, living then in Poland, and, and perhaps some of the challenges they had of living in Poland, where they felt distinctly different, and the, the racism perhaps they experienced there. And then they talk about their experience of living in Heisen Green and not feeling that sense of being different because theoretically everyone's so different, there's so many different cultures here. So I feel like that's a really positive reflection on an area like this and it really does kind of dispel um, you know, mainstream ideals of, of what works and what doesn't work. Um, I, I've, I've been really fascinated with that kind of cyclical um, pattern that's appeared there with the Roma community. Mm-hmm. It's really mm. interesting. Mm. 